Hi everyone, this is Marcy with Creators Call, and I am so excited to finally be working on these Christmas journals today. I've got two of them in mind that I want to do. One of them is a carryover from last year that I just never got finished, and the other one is this one. I'm going to be doing this in a retro 70s kind of vibe, and I've really been looking forward to doing that. This one, as I said, I started last year and just didn't get to it. I had three others that I did and I ran out of steam and energy, but it turned out to be a good thing because this summer when I did the Secret Santa swap, Dale McBay was my Secret Santa giving to me and she sent me an Ideals magazine. And so I wanted to go through and try to add those. I thought I had already added them, but I'm not sure that I have, but I just kind of want to retrofit this or kind of re redesign it in a way. It's got lots of fun old papers and I've got all kinds of fun things in it, but I think I can do better. Now the pages in this are a little bit tricky just the way that they are set up. And um, I thought I had not, I'm not sure if I actually put those pages in or not. I don't think I have, but I saw so many that were just amazing um, in the, when I flipped through that magazine. So I don't think I have added them, and yet I'm seeing some Ideals pages. So maybe I did. I'm going to have to go double check what I actually did. So I had it in my mind that I had added them in, and then I'm, now I'm like, I'm not sure. <laughs> so anyway, we are going to be working on this, and I'm going to go grab that magazine at the break here in just a sec and just verify that I have the pages in here that I want. So that's what we're going to be working on today. I think this one is going to come together pretty quickly since I did a lot of the work and the prep last year. I also want to add in some pages from this booklet. And it may or may not work. Yeah, but this also has a bit of that 70s vibe. So maybe parts of this will go into this other journal as well. And then I had... Oh, I have these two pages, the uh, pictures I really liked and I wanted to make pockets out of those. So I'm going to set those aside. Anyway, so that's what we are going to be working on today. For the 70s one, I have this whole packet. I'm going to crinkle here for a second. I have this whole bundle of papers and things and this whole envelope with more things and trims and fabrics and everything. And so I've been saving for this one for a while. So I'm pretty thrilled that finally this Christmas I'm going to be able to work on it. And it is another binder style uh, similar to the one that I just finished with Mimi's Prayer Garden. The two I just finished actually. So yeah, I'm, I think it's a manageable amount, which is really my main goal because I want them to turn out well. I want to do a good job on them, but I want to get them into people's hands before the Christmas season hits. All right. So with all of that being said, <laughs> let's go ahead and get yourselves ready to watch if you're gonna get comfy or craft along, get yourself set up to do that. And then we'll be back in just a minute and start working on this little guy. Okay, I'm back and I have grabbed the magazine. So, I know there are a few ideals pages in here now, so I'm really confused about what I did. I thought I had added them before, reconfigured what I had. Now this is not an ideals page, that's from a different book. I also added in some nicer uh, coffee dyed papers, things that I have ordered to give it just a nicer, nicer look. I think it's turning into a much nicer journal now than it was. This one's folded up, so I'm gonna have to put something there. So you're getting kind of a quick flip through. Now the way this uh, journal was put together, or excuse me, not the journal, but the book. The way this book was put together, there are a couple of spots here where I don't wanna break up the images by putting pages in between. So I put paper clips to, to remind myself not to put pages there. I'm wanting this to have kind of a like earthy vibe, more natural. I'll show you, I have some trims and things that look more like burlap and uh, like these wooden buttons. I've got wooden snowflakes, kind of more uh, earth tones, fall, almost like fall colored of flowers. And then 
right here. I've got this trim that I found at a thrift store a while back, but I just love it. Where did I order this? I might've ordered this one on Etsy. No, I don't remember. It's been too long. Found this. So I just want it to have kind of more of a rough homespun kind of look because Jesus was uh, from a simple, just regular everyday, not rich family. And he was born in a stable. So I just kind of wanted it to have that feeling. Oh yeah, so here's another. This is one from the new magazine. The new magazine from Gail. <laughs> new to me. And this one, yeah. So I think I did already add them in. However, I saw another page in there that I could use. Maybe. I'm not sure that there's a good spot for it now, but it had the um, picture of the nativity on it. These are from an old uh, children's Bible. The Ken, Ken Taylor is the editor, and I think he did the artwork and stuff, but it's uh, one of those, and it has the most beautiful pictures. So I like, I'm glad that I'm finally able to use some of those. Let's see. Um, yeah, I'm gonna cover that up. Although this would have been a perfect one for the page in my O'Tannenbaum <laughs> journal that I wanna do. But what I really liked was just the image of the sleeping village. And so I think that kind of ties in with the, the idea of a sleeping Bethlehem when Jesus was born. Let's see, where was I? Right there. Yeah, so I have some of these pretty um, stained papers. They're like blueberry dyed and coffee dyed. And I ordered them from different different sellers on Etsy. So you can always just do a search and see who you come up with. And there's that one. This is from a different book again. So maybe, well, I don't know. The one that I saw, the picture that I saw, I don't want to dither around on camera because we don't have all that time, but the one I was noticing is this. And then I also wanted to include pages from this. This is an old church, um, it's a Christmas program, and it was like for responsive readings and stuff. Our church was cleaning out the basement and I found a whole bunch, a whole box of them. So I do have them in sets of two in my Etsy shop, which is linked below. If you're interested in purchasing a couple or making a purchase for your own journals, it has the hymns, Christmas carols, and then it has responsive readings and reflective pieces. So I did want to try to add those in as well. I saw this one, this page here with the silent night. And I really like these too, these artwork. But you know, I can't, I can't use this whole magazine in this single journal, but <laughs> look what else I found. This is that image. So it's a stock image, obviously from the eighties. <laughs> anyway. But I might use this maybe in the 70s journal because it totally, totally fits the vibe. But this is the one I was really seeing that I'd love to figure out how to use in here. And I think this might be the best place for it. Let's see. Yep, because I have other hymns and things in here too. I've made myself a few notes about what I want to have where. I could put one here too. Okay, so let's see. I could put something here. And I could put something here. So let's let's remove Silent Night. I really like that. It's so pretty. Come on, buddy. There's that. And I think could probably use some color right here. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna have to go back and measure and see how tall these pages were because I don't remember. Let's see, how much do I need to trim off? Oh, very little, about a quarter of an inch. There we go. So I think that would be fine right there. There goes that. Now the trick is to not get it out of order, right? <laughs> then I can take one of these and 
Let's see, do we have one about shepherds? There's a picture of a shepherd there. The Annunciation. Let's see, Prophecy of Isaiah. That might be a good one. I want something that's a little bit different. Oh, here, the shepherd's response. So let me see which, which hymns or which Christmas carols I already have in here because I don't want to repeat. Oh yeah, see that already looks better, doesn't it? And here's like tropical palm trees and here are the wise men. Let's see. Okay, where's my music? Okay, so we have No Room. Good. Tell Me Gentle Shepherd. Okay. Just a reminder again that I do have music packs in my store, um, in my Etsy shop that I am trying to uh, pass on to the world because they were going to go in the trash. I rescued them from the church basement. And so there are lots of Christmas hymns and carols and things in those packs as well. Hark the Herald Angels Sing from Heaven Above. Okay, so. Let's see. Is that it? Well, then I'm thinking I can use another music page. So... I don't think it'll hurt at all to have another music. Okay, so we want it right here. Yeah, we can break that up. So I kind of like this right here. It has the prophecy from Isaiah. And um, first, I need to take the staples out, which I don't have my... Um, I reordered a flat staple puller for myself because I gave mine to my daughter. <laughs> I I'd ha had ordered two and gave one to her and one to her friend who teaches music at the elementary school where they both work. And so now I have to wait for mine to come back. But that would have been a very handy tool right now instead of tearing up my fingernails. So how's everybody doing? What are you guys working on? Have you started your Christmas things yet? Yeah, or are you working on fall? I mean, typically I don't rush the seasons, but I did want to get them, get these into people's hands, you know. Oh, look at this. This is the right size. So here's the prophecy, and there's Mary. Well, come all you faithful, we three kings, a star leads to Bethlehem. Oh, I like that. Nice. Okay. All right, I'm even happier now. Got a couple extra pages in here. All right, so the first thing we're going to have to do is, uh, I'm, I could work on this cover right now, but it's more than I want to do on camera. Um, the next thing we do want to do <laughs> is put some of the ephemera and pockets and things together in here. Like I said, I think this is going to go together pretty easily, pretty quickly, since it's mostly laid out from last year. Sorry, I know it looks like I'm just thumbing back and forth. You're right, I am thumbing back and forth. Okay, so setting this here. Let's start by gluing this pocket. I could do sewing in this. I hadn't really thought that far. Okay, this doesn't... I might because I think I'm going to have to run some trim down each side of that. I'm still getting used to the setup here on my new sit-stand table desk. It is uh, 10 inches wider from side to side than my old table. So this one is 70 inches this way. My other table was 60. But my other table was deeper that way. And so I've lost about 8 inches going north to south. <laughs> and so... Um, I'm just having to get used to where everything is. But I think it's better actually for the camera setup because now the camera is a little bit closer and more above my workspace. So I think that is actually a little bit easier for the filming and getting you guys into, into the shot, you know. So got that glued in. And moving on. I will probably put a pocket or something over this. See, is there anything else I need to glue down or what have you? 
Yeah, I like that. I can put a little sticker or maybe even some stamping right there. That'll look cool. Okay, so this one. This one needs to get folded up. We need, to, we need to put something over the top, but I picked it because it's the city of Jerusalem. That's old Jerusalem. Isn't that pretty? Now my question is, what do we want to put there? So I could put this or got some burlap in there and it's getting strings everywhere. Or I could put this one just as a decoration along the pocket. I think that'd be kind of cool. Oh, I like that. But what I will do is cut it so it doesn't cross the crease right here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, first I wanna ink that, I think. This one is crying out for ink. This journal. And which way's up? Which side looks nicer? Because that is the top. It's really hard to tell. I don't know. I guess that side. Let me grab my ink. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is ink this up so we get some definition. And get all the creases. And then when I lay the uh, lace down, this crochet lace, it should really stand out and look really nice. I'm probably doing the inside where I didn't need to do, but. I'm gonna go all the way up. There we go. Go all the way up this side. There we go. So just a reminder, if um, you are looking for journals and things, well, first of all, I still have my sale going in my Etsy shop. And there are a couple of journals in there. I will be adding a third little Christmassy journal that I threw together the other day. And um, it's all from scraps and stuff, but I'll add that to the Etsy shop. But from here on in, I'm pretty much gonna be listing everything in the coffee shop. Coffee shop. Coffee. K-O-F-I. So that's linked below. The garden journals are still in there waiting for a new home. So just wanted to let you know in case you're not sure where they are, or um, you were wondering if they were gone because you didn't see them on Etsy, they're in the coffee shop. And I just think that's really gonna be better. You know, I really think this is the backside. Okay, well, we're, we're just gonna glue it this way and hope for the best. Just run, I think I would just want to run it in a line here and a line there. I'm going to just make a big square for it to lay in. Rectangle, I guess. And just lay this down. Oops, upside down. There we go. Oh, that's pretty. And then this will just stick out the edge, just the teensiest bit. So I'm working slowly on adding more stuff to the coffee shop. I um, I want to list a couple things that were in my Etsy shop. I had been in on that collab last Christmas where I had to make a digital. Uh, if she asks me again, I'm going to say no thank you because I got zero sales off of that. <laughs> got zero commission. <laughs> and it, I mean, I'm not really a digital artist. So after the amount of work that I put into it, which... Granted, isn't as much as a lot of digital artists, actual artists put in, but it was a lot for me and to have no result is a little discouraging. So um, I'm gonna, I'm working on that, but I went to put the listing photos, you know, cause you have to put a certain kind of picture for the listing versus the one that is downloadable. So you actually end up making two versions of everything. Anyway, I can't find it. I can't find where those uh, JPEGs are for the listing photo. 
but they were on my Etsy shop, so where on earth did I have them? I think what I did was I used my uh, our desktop computer, and I think I did those in Publisher, and I think they're on our desktop. They're not on my Mac, I know that. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly glue this here, and then I will decide later how much sewing I wanna do, if I wanna go over stuff with sewing, but in the meantime, this is glued down like it should be. I think the sewing will add to it, it's just, you know, I have to get out the machine and everything. And I don't stick, all right? Do not stick to each other. I'm going to put like, this stuff. It's, um, you know, backing from stickers and, and packaging. So it's really handy to have a couple pieces nearby so that when you're gluing, you don't stick things together. And then here, let me go back to this page. This one has just got a completely different feeling than any other one I've done before, so that's that's cool. And while we're at it, let's distress this page too. daughter coming to town for the week. My son-in-law is coming towards the end of the week. And um, so they'll be here for about eight days total. Um, unfortunately, my son-in-law lost his grandma. And so Katie was planning on coming to town anyway for just for fun and to surprise her sister with a visit. And um, then his grandma's service got scheduled. Well, look what I just did. Uh, his grandma's service got scheduled so um, for the end of that week, so he's coming a little bit later for that. She's she was already planning on coming, so yeah, I'm trying to get trying to get um, just get things done so that I can focus on their visit and still have my videos ready to go. And then um, thank you so much for the. Get well wishes for my husband's shoulder surgery. It's not gonna be till November, but we are trying to kind of get prepped. So he's he's been looking at all kinds of videos on how to uh, prepare for it. And so he's practicing using his left hand to do everything because it's his right shoulder that's gonna get operated on. And then I got some great tips from Carol over at Crinkled Path. So thanks, Carol. We're looking for those t-shirts you mentioned and um, I found one for me that says, I survived my husband's shoulder repair surgery or something, <laughs> or rotator cuff surgery. <laughs> so I bu I'm buying that for me. Now because of the smear, I kind of want, I want that to blend. So I'm gonna grab my little handy dandy spray bottle. And my little, this is really my little rag that I use. So it's not wet, it's dried out, so that's perfect. Kill two birds with one stone on that deal. See how it's moving the ink around? Unfortunately, it's not, not taking care of my spot. Darn. Okay. I was hoping it would blend. Blend. No, nope. I'm just making it worse. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to do was to glue some trim down the side. I think I want this one. I really like this. Isn't this pretty? And should we run it down the whole page or just, just this part? This is what I was thinking originally. And I think the whole page looks nice though. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah, I gotta, gotta, reverse this and make sure I have right side up. There we go. And then I'm going to I'll leave a little overhang on this bottom end because that's I need to trim that off, the frayed piece. That's cute. 
And what, yeah, let's put a little, little dot of glue. There we go. So hopefully it will still not be frayed. It'll keep from fraying, hopefully. Trim there. And trim here. I don't want to get glue on my, on my fabric sewing scissors, though. That would make me sad. So yeah, that's one of the things. And then we had a pickup. Did I tell you guys this already? I don't remember. We have a pickup that we bought a few years ago because we knew we were going to have a stage where we needed to help kids move um, and some other things. We had a big clean out project going and we knew we, instead of renting a truck every time, it would just be handier to have the truck. So we purchased a pickup. Well, now it's time that stage is over. So we're going to sell the pickup and we're going to actually sell it to my son-in-law. And in preparation for that, um, I don't have a pin for that. In preparation for that, we're kind of car shopping, but we kind of, you know, it all has, the timing on it all has to, <laughs> has to work out. So we're car shopping and so my husband's like, well, you know, I won't be able to test drive a car. Our son-in-law can't pay us till mid, mid to end October. And so he's like, I can't test drive a car after my shoulder surgery. So we need, <laughs> we need to go looking before. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? All of a sudden I feel like there's all these things just kind of trying to take over my schedule. And I really don't want that because I have my own things I'm trying to do. <laughs> trying to finish a bunch of projects that are long overdue and get them out of my hair so I can move on. And right at the moment, I feel like everyone's trying to take my schedule away from me so I get a little grouchy. Yep, that's still a little wet, but I'm gonna stick that back here. And you guys should be dry, so and I can do that. And that, there we go. Okay, so moving on. What else have we got? Now, where was that page I just had? Right here. Okay, anybody else need gluing that's going to need something, but I don't know what yet. Get glue all over me. So this one, all right. This one I'm going to glue this bag and then I wanted, wanted this to go on it. So this was a quote, this is from Mrs. Cog's Crafts on Etsy and she has tons of printables with all kinds of cool quotes and, and images and things. She does a great job. So, I want that on there, but I'm wondering, should I back, should I put something behind it? And now that I'm seeing that, I'm also wondering, I don't want this one, I want the red. Here's our tags from last week. Look at that. <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together. Look how nicely that goes. So, we'll start with this. I want a pretty corner. I love this old thing. It's um from my early scrapbooking days, because I love just that little tiny scallop that it puts there and there. Once they stop making these, I've, I've never seen anything like it again. Carl. Carl was the brand. I bought this, believe it or not, at Office Max. I had a couple of them I found at the office supply store back when scrapbooking was new, so I guess they figured they could try to get in on the craze. But I'll tell you what, it holds up unless I use some really lightweight paper, but I just love the look, you know? Now my next question is, should I go around this with red or green, not just brown? Because then that would make it pop, wouldn't it? I'm just getting out all the things right at the moment. Should I do red? I think I do want to do red. I've got fired brick here. One of these days I need to go get candy apple red because I picked this one because it's not quite as bright, but sometimes you do want a brighter red. I think if Tim Holtz watched me, he'd be appalled that I don't use these things right, but 
I never learned quite how to do them the right way. <laughs> so I get by, let's just say that. I'm in too big of a hurry to learn how to do it right. Isn't that sad? Okay, so I'm gonna put that on the bag. So still to answer our question, do I want something behind it a little bit to make this stand out from the page? I kind of think I do. But what if, let's try going around this first, see what happens. Let's take you out of there, buddy. Because this might be all it needs, I don't know. Okay, let's see. It's just getting lost in there. What does it need? I think I might just paper clip that there for now and think on that. Put this back in though. That was a happy accident, wasn't it? <laughs> How nice that that worked out. Okay. What else have we got? Yeah, so does it want scrapbook paper behind it? Would it want music? Would it want book text? Bible page? Solid? I don't know. I don't think I thought that far ahead yet. Okay, so this one is a poem. I wanted it to go on here. This is old uh, Christmas stationery. We did our Christmas letter on once upon a time. So first, I need to tear this down a little more. And I'm gonna tear it just a little closer. I don't know if I meant for it to be a pocket. I don't think I did. And the other thing is, again, if I wanted to sew around it, I need to do that before I glue it down because I don't want to sew through this piece. Boy, so many things to think about. I thought this was going to be quick and easy. Who told me this was going to be quick and easy? <laughs> this isn't straight. How come you're not straight? Try again, just, I can't get too close because I'm gonna run into the title. This is where the decal scissors come in handy because sometimes, oops, sometimes you can just make it blend in a little bit with the scissors. See, voila, perfect. And then, you know, it's a little too close so now I don't have any room to sew. say welcome to to all of my new viewers and subscribers you guys it's so nice to see you and to hear from you and for those um if you don't have a youtube channel um i was just going to tell you that there is a spot in youtube studio where you can see if somebody's mentioned you in the comments or in their titles in their videos and so i check that periodically to see if anyone has mentioned me and there have been a few, so I try to go out and answer and um, just comment on those videos when I see them. So thank you. I appreciate that. I love that we can all share our ideas and stuff together and just kind of piggyback off each other. And Yeah, it's really fun. Let's see, I want that. I guess I don't really have to do the whole page because... Part of it's going to be covered by the poem and I want it to show and because I didn't wash my stencil last time there's going to be brown bleeding into the green Let's see now we'll go down here yeah I am loving this sit stand desk so I had done a bunch of die cutting and stuff and it was so nice to have the table up where it was at a comfortable level because before part of why I never never did it very often was it hurts your back after a while from bending over the table but also like my table's never clean enough <laughs> so I'm always um you know got something else going on and so I 
never really have the room for it, but with this being wider and longer, it's, it was um, nice and big for all the stuff that I had to drag out. It's actually quite enjoyable. Okay, so this was going inside. Sorry, I wanna see. This was next to this, so if I have green and green, I want this to stand out. And I do want it more earthy. I could do, oh, let's do the gray. I think the brown will be too brown, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna try the gray. Like, I'm not sure what dauber I was using for gray, but this might have been black, but it'll be close enough. So let's make that stand out because now there's no room to sew around it. So. I don't know if I have one of those stamps that has sewing, like sewing stitching lines. I'll have to go check another time. I think I might. If I do, I might stamp a few on here. I think this is just going to be a much better journal because of um, all of the um, all the changes that I made to it. I don't want to say corrections. It wasn't wrong. It just felt incomplete, you know, and now it now it feels like a complete journal. So for those of you who um, might be new to journal making, truthfully, there's no mistake and no like right or wrong way to make a junk journal or a journal in general. And so I really want to just let you know, I mean, I talk about all of the things that I do because I want you to understand that very often I don't go with the first pass. I change change around what I'm doing and um, and so it's you know the first time through it's kind of like writing a term paper the first time through is your rough draft and then you keep changing it and tweaking it and making improvements until you're satisfied and then and then the journal says I'm finished you can you can sew me together now. <laughs> So it's kind of like that. That's kind of how I view it. Now I like that. I wonder, should I like do one of these dealy bobbers where you wrinkle it, make it look kind of old? Oh yeah, let's tear you. Yep, make this look like an old document a little bit. Let's see if we can do that. Maybe it doesn't need stitching. Maybe it just needs aging. Oops, now see, when you accidentally wrinkle it, you just go with it. So if that's the case, then I can use, I don't think that gray went on that very dark. A little bit more, please. I can use some of the vintage photo too. Maybe I should, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm gonna go over it because um, what happens is then when you ink over it, all those little folds and wrinkles become more apparent. That's what it needs. It needs to look older. And here's where it gets really fun because you just start, you know, imagining what it is you want to do to something and going with it. For instance, I would kind of like a tear here there. Like if I was, if I had a folded document and I were to kind of tear it like so, because it's never a straight tear, is it? There we go. Making it look a little dog-eared. Like maybe you had this in your pocket. Or maybe, I don't think the shepherds were educated in reading and writing, but the wise men could have been. They definitely were educated peoples. So, you know, maybe they've crumpled this up and taken it on their journey and taken it out of their pocket to read over and over. Joseph was probably educated enough to read and write because he had a business, and a lot of that they learned in Hebrew school, so the boys did, the girls didn't. The women were not educated like that, typically. Okay. Yeah, I like that. 
I think of something else to do to it, I will definitely do it. Now we're gonna glue, and I'm just using this one because it's handy. going somewhere. I have to go to the store before my daughter comes because I have to get her favorite non-dairy creamer. <laughs> I have to get some dog food because her dog and my dog eat the same things. So he just eats out of Chloe's, but you know, he eats the same food that we give Chloe, but um, I am low on dog food. Does anybody know about... Um, I mean, I've had two other dogs. One of them made it to the senior stage, and the other one didn't. We lost him too young. Little bruisey. That was too bad. Anyway, so my dog now is 11, 11 and a half or so. And I don't know. I tried to switch her to senior food oh, a couple years ago, and she did not do well on it. And the vet said, well, it was probably too rich, and it was probably not time. But she's 11, and their dog is also 11. He's a little black and tan dachshund. And so he's already been switched to the senior food, and I I feel like with our first dog, I just did it. I didn't really ask the vet. <laughs> I just, I'm like, oh, you're old, you need to switch. And then she didn't seem to have any trouble with it. So I'm just wondering if I should switch Chloe, or at what point, how do you know if you need to switch the dog to the senior food is what I'm asking, because I don't know. It's not time for her vet appointment yet, so. I guess I could wait, but since he eats the senior, I thought I'd mix the two. She eats his food when we're over there and she has no problem. So that's what makes me think it might work out. That looks so cool. Okay. Okay, and when you put it in with that, oh yeah, I like that. Okay, so on this side is going to be this picture. It's on the other side. Okay, so I'm thinking I might make this one a tip-in. I think I want to trim it maybe just a little bit closer because here's the shepherd with the angel and here they are with baby Jesus. And so I, I don't want to lose the image. Okay. Do I want to do anything to the background of this page though? That's the question. Hmm. I don't have a ton of a ton of uh, stencils. Does this look too fancy? It might be. I could do just a little bit up in the corner here, and maybe down here. That might work. Okay. Hopefully this won't shake the table. I did notice when this uh, table is raised, it's kind of more wobbly up high. But I do think I might decide to do some filming standing up once in a while. It's just, it's just nice, you know? Okay, let's get the green ink. Do the leaves. I like how the colors all kind of get together and run into each other. So there's that one there. And then this is actually on the edge. Let's do it like that. Wow, that looks like a lot. Let's do it like that. There we go. And now for the green. So it's fired brick and this green is rustic wilderness. I liked it because it's a true, true green, more Christmassy kind of looking. Oh, that didn't get red enough. What's that? Better. Okay. So anyway, I, I do like that. I also like the 
mowed, mowed lawn, mown lawn, mowed. I think he said mowed in the title. The lawn has been mown, not mowed. <laughs> Sorry. And so now we are going to veer off into the grammar police. Okay, so the other thing actually, before I lay that down, should I leave it like this for the writing space or should I lay down some lined paper? I could add lined paper after, that won't be a problem. So again, you guys tell me what you think. Should I add, I have some that's kind of an ivory off-white color and I could do the same treatment to it that I did here. And it would, it would look very similar in color to this. It just already has lines, I could tear it. Or shall I just leave it white? I've got a little ink spot there. And I want to go around this one. This is vin I'm going between vintage photo and walnut stain. This is vintage photo right here. And I need to wrap this up because I think my time is up. Pretty sure. Ink, ink the crease, oh, that might not show up. Hmm. That's right. And then I would run some um, washi tape over this piece. I actually, I, when I lay down the writing space, it would lay over this, so I wouldn't even really need washi tape if I don't want. Tell me in the comments, um, answer the, the questions <laughs> that I've asked you about colors and stuff. And uh, I will read those and act upon them. Probably not for the next video because I'm going to film the next video right now. But um, when I go to finish up these pages, I will definitely take your comments into consideration because that's why I ask them. I want your opinions. Sometimes I just don't know. Sometimes I know exactly what I want to do and sometimes it's a surprise to all of us once I get going. Yeah, I just ordered some snowflake and I think I got some with pine trees maybe, uh, stencils, a couple new ones. So that was a long time coming. Should I put a tab here? I think I had, did I have a thingy with tabs? Hold it, hold it. Hmm. Hmm, I've got all my little cute, um, these are for later as we get going and embellishing. I like this. This is a very old postage stamp. See that? Isn't that cool? So that's going to decorate something perfect for this but um those those little bits and pieces won't happen till later got some denison labels here love those things but i could put maybe i've got this cluster it needs a decoration focal point and i've got this one might be too big might be too big for that but something it needs a tab some kind of tab there. Here's some more Mrs. Cog thingies. So yeah, I've got lots of options for decorating. Um, what's this? Just scraps. Okay, we're gonna have to wait on that as well until we know better what we wanna do. Slide those back in. I've got my two washi tapes here that I think will tie in very nicely. Okay, so we're gonna hold off on that, figuring out the tab, and then this is gonna go back. I love this stationery. This is the best stationery, but I like how it um, ties in with this book page with the colors. Okay, so that's, that's it for now. 
for today's session. Just getting started. Oh, look at it, it's already gonna come together. Um, can't guarantee that for the next one I will have this done. Should we work on that next time? I mean, you guys know how to do a spine, right? I kind of wanted to finish this so I know how wide to make it. It'll probably end up being about a one, one and a half inch spine. This is only a single signature journal, so. Um, I just wanted to see how everything else fits in here before I do that. Then I'll know how wide to make it. I am getting all kinds of little ink, ink things on things. Darn it, I'm gonna have to go back and like speckle it with splatter paint or something. <laughs> I don't know where all those little bits and things are coming from. I could though, I could, I have a splatter um, stencil, so I could actually just stencil some splatters in there and that would actually, that might be what I'll do instead of the writing lines. But still, go ahead and tell me what you think, guys, because I think that would look cool. So yeah, that's it for today. So today, it's kind of a short and sweet little quote for today. It's from Benjamin Franklin and it says, one today is worth two tomorrows. He was a guy who got stuff done. If you've ever read his autobiography, man, it's impressive how that guy, he, how he scheduled his day and how he fit something into every spare minute. Um, but he always said, never put off till tomorrow what you can do today. And I'm like, well, cause I'm tired. That's why I might put it off till tomorrow, but I don't think he ever ran out of energy. <laughs> so anyway, he says one today is worth two tomorrows. So I guess make the most of today which is what we're doing in our video today. All right, guys, seasons are changing. Fall is in the air and Christmas is around the corner. So I hope you all are doing well and that you're staying healthy and happy. Until next time, be inspired, do something creative today, and I'll talk to you in our next video. Bye-bye now.